good morning. That was a cracking sunrise. This is the story of Alan Clore, a famous murder back in the 1700s. Well, here we are on Goose Hill, heading out for a one night camp. Got my hat on. It says, where's the fish, actually? Here's <laughs> my fishing hat. <laughs> but I thought WTF might be more appropriate. We're heading up over here. You'll recognize that place. So we're gonna spend the night on the top of there, hopefully, as long as no one else has got a spot. It's about, I'd say it's about six, quarter past six, something like that. Sunset's about quarter to seven, so probably 30 40 minutes to get up there, then get the tent up. Very quick one nighter, back first thing in the morning. So, get up and out in the tent for a while. Also, trying out the new Zen Bivy uh, bed system. It's going to get to about three degrees tonight, so that should be a good test. But uh, we'll see how we go. It is a Friday, rammed on old motorhome alley as we call it locally. But yeah, I'll catch up with you when we get to the bottom of the pass. Behind me here, this is a uh, mum uh, cow Nick, not Mum Nick, that's over there. <laughs> uh, this is Cow Nick, that's another way up. There's a rope halfway up there to help you up. But this way to pack on, I'm not going to go up there, be quite slippy in the wet. It's bad enough going up and down there, the light pack on you. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's one way up. We're heading on down here to the bottom by Speedwell Cavern. But just look at the light there on uh, Wind Hill and Lewis Hill. Fantastic. So this is a Speedwell Cavern. This is an 18th century lead mine. Um, not a very profitable one. They spent £14,000 and only recovered £3,000 worth of lead from it. So, uh, but a good thing, a unique thing about it was they built like a, a canal inside. So you go down some steps, there's a canal and then Victorians realized, actually, this would make a good tourist attraction. Highly recommended that. It takes you down to a, a cavern at the end where there's a so-called, yet another one, bottomless pit. Um, a bit like Alden Hole, everywhere's the bottomless pit, isn't it? Not so bottomless now because the miners use it to chuck all the spoil in there, so it's uh, not that deep at all now, but yeah, highly recommended that Speedwell Cavern. Well worth a go. We are now at the bottom of when it's past. So when it's pass, when it's come from Windy Gates. Now gates was a, an old English word, possibly even Viking word for hollow or gorge. So, which when you look at the shape and the contours of it, makes absolute sense, doesn't it really? So we're gonna head up there now. Once we've gone through this gate, So, when it's past, this was formed around 300 million years ago. This whole area was a very shallow sea, like a lagoon. So, all this limestone was formed as sea creatures and whatever died and settled to the bottom. At one time they believed this was a, an underground cavern that collapsed in on itself. But the latest thoughts are that it is a, uh, it's always been a, a canyon and it was under sea and now obviously uh, with erosion and whatever else anything that filled it in has been eroded away but yeah spectacular very well known most of you will know this place we'll stop at a couple of spots on the way up uh, when i get back to the campsite i'll tell you about a quite famous horrific murder that happened here back in the 1700s but i'll wait until we're at the tent in the dark and spook myself shitless <laughs> But yeah, best thing about this time of night, not many people up here. And we're gonna be camping up on one of these pinnacles, hopefully that one there, 
there's like a bit of an area there we can look down the valley but in the morning it's looking like it's going to be pretty clear skies overnight so a touch of wood touch of touch of luck wood look bloody hell mate uh, we should hopefully get a good sunrise don't know if you'll get an inversion or not we'll have to just see what what it's like in the morning it's gonna be quite cold overnight so you know it could possibly be this here is what's colloquially known as a suicide cave you go into, into a cave system that brings you out elsewhere um, there's a bit of a blurb around it there it's all based around it's known as a suicide cave in the 30s after an untrue legend that a couple took their own lives inside it uh, and the rest of it just tells you about uh, how it was formed which was like I just explained this is all part of a reef in the sea 330 million years ago and the waters cut this channel out it's in a site of scientific special interest SSSI but this cave was formed about 100,000 years ago I won't go too far back suffice to say I'll put a link to some videos you go around that corner and then there's like a ladder down to the cave system so that's quite cool so that's a suicide cave can glasses so look intelligent who knows this is a very famous tree here and here is where you see a lot of people taking photographs this is about as far as they walk up as they park in the car park down here and that's about as far as they go we are going up the full length so this here is a scramble called the devil's elbow so it's a really good scramble quite difficult but uh, if scrambling is your thing then this is a really good one well, I'm way past that these days bad enough walking up the top of the fucking hill mate anyway onwards and upwards Here we are at the top of Winnets Pass, you've got Mam Tor behind us and then the Great Ridge. So this is like a bit of a, it's like an old quarry or something, doesn't it? So we're on the top there, we're going to head along the edge. Before I do that, I'm just going to give you a bit more history about this place that I didn't know about actually. So, about 1932, most of you are probably quite familiar with the uh, Kinder Trespass, the mass trespass that went up from Hayfield onto Kinder Scout. Had a bit of a set to the Duke of Devonshire's gamekeepers and stuff, but led to all of our rights that we have now, really, in terms of Rome right to Rome, not to say right to Rome, but open access and rights of way. But there was an even bigger one a few months later here at Winnets Pass, which had 10,000 people turn up, and apparently that's the biggest ever Ramblers protest in history. So I never knew that until I did a bit of digging around. So it's really uh, interesting fact that to know that 10,000 people turned up here. Mind you, you get 10,000 up on Mam Tour these days, don't you? Anyway, whew, that was a bit odd. I've uh, not been too clever this week, as usual, uh, with cold, a bit of a cold and whatever. So I've not really been out doing much. So uh, this is a bit of a out of the frying pan into the fire moment to go out with an 18 kilo pack up when it's past. But just look at the light there on the top of them hills. The sun is just going down now, so I'm hoping we'll get a bit of a sunset when we get on the top over here. Uh, but the sunrise will be more spectacular here.
Oh, look at that. You can see the shadow of the land there and then the sunlight still catching the edges. Absolutely stunning. That's where you come out for. Last hour of the day, first hour of the day. This looks like a good pitch. Get some good shots in the morning. It's quite flat here. Um, quite sheltered from the wind. Looks like a bit of a sunset over there in the distance. We won't quite get that here. Let's go have a quick look um, on the top of this one. If that's no better, then we'll come back there, I think, because we'll get some good shots. The sunrise will come over that way somewhere. So that not, might not be a bad spot to peek. So we get to the edge here. You can see down the full length of the pass. So we should get some cracking views. And if you go up here, you can see over that side. I'm just going to walk over there anyway and see if that's any better of a viewpoint. I think that's not a bad viewpoint either, really. A bit rockier here, but there's a bit of a patch. I think the last one over there is a bit flatter, personally. So, the thing is we can move around in the morning and see all the pictures anyway, can't we? So I think, think, we'll go for this one. A bit flatter, a few less rocks. And they probably won't see us from the road either here. So, yeah, I think we'll go with this. Then in the morning we can walk around and get some cracking views around here. But it's a bit sheltered here, a little bit of a dip. Right, so I'm going to crack on and get a tent up now. I'll catch it with you when that's up. There is a Zen Bivy bed now. I've done it into a fleece. So my feet go in to this bit at the bottom here. Let me see that in this light in here. And then this bit is open or it can be zipped up. Pillows in the end. So we shall see how that goes tonight. But it looks bloody comfy. Anyway, that's all the tent set up. Oh, fucking hell. There's a tent set up. It's starting to get dark now. No one of a soul up here. So the wind's starting to pick up a bit now. It had forecast winds, so I didn't bring my drone with me. There's a lot of people up there for the sunrise on Mamtor. Sunrise, sunset, you dick. But yeah, we're in a not too bad a spot. The wind's north northwest, which will come through the val through this uh, pass here this is called windy gates for a reason i tell you now when the wind comes howling down here it has bins over and everything in the village it absolutely proper comes through like a funnel hence the name windy gates but we'll uh, get settled in for the night now and uh get a brew on i've got some horlicks i feel a lot better for that walk felt like crap earlier i really did uh take these glasses off now I felt like crap earlier and uh, I wasn't sure if I was even going to come out, but I'm glad I did now. So, yeah, plenty of, like I say, plenty of people up on Mam Tour, but not a soul up here bar me. Sunrise is about seven o'clock in the morning. So we've gone past the equinox now. That was on the 22nd of September, which is about four days ago. So the nights are going to start drawing in. I wonder if we're in a minute, because we'll probably start to see the lights down in the village lighting up, but it's not as cold as I thought actually. I think once I get tucked up in that bag, I'll be toasty warm. I brought me um, down jacket with me. I'm also looking at getting a, a down pair of trousers soon, I think, as well. But yeah, definitely starting to get dark now. I'm going to go in here, get everything else set up for the night. We're not far off here now. Going to take a bit of photography before the light disappears anymore. And then I'll catch up with you when I have a bit of a brew. Good evening. Oh, here we are, just having a brew. It's a bit dark with this, let me just see if I can do it without, uh, better. It's a bit spooky that. That's good. I'll tell you a bit about the history, about the quite a famous murder that happened here back in the 1700s. They never really got found out until about 10 years after it. This is the story of Alan Clara, a famous murder back in the 1700s. So about 1758, 
was a couple called Alan and Clara who wanted to get married. Now, Clara was quite well off, Alan wasn't, and Clara's father really wasn't up for that. So they came down to Derbyshire to go to the Peak Forest Chapel. This was built in around 1657 by Christiana, sorry, the Countess of Devonshire. It was a bit like Gretna Green, it was outside normal ecclesiastical rules. So you could come here and get married without permission of your parents. So Alan and Clara came here and they were passing through. They had quite a large dowry on them, 200 pounds, which in, back in the day was worth about 35,000 pounds. So they stopped in Castleton in one of the inns and some drunken miners overheard them and uh, basically decided, hey, up, oh, we can do a bit of a robbery here. So they ambushed them in Winnett's Pass and essentially robbed them. First of all, they slit Alan's throat and poor old Clara was begging for mercy and one of the other miners drove a pickaxe through her head and then they threw her, their bodies into one of the caves and, or mine shafts in the area and no one found the bodies until about 10 years later or they did find the horses about a week after they disappeared and the red saddle is still seen in the Speedwell Cavern in the, in the museum there. Anyway Nothing really happened until one of the guys was on his deathbed and confessed to everything. But what really materialised as well was, and it was published in the uh, Derby News in 1788, and I'll read an extract from it. So in 1758, a young gentleman and lady came out of Scotland on an expedition and were robbed and murdered at a place called the Winnets near Castleton. Their bones were found in 1768 by some miners sinking an engine pit. So the miners, James A, Nicholas C, Thomas H, John B and Francis B, meeting them in the Winnets, pulled them off their horses and dragged them into a barn and took from them 200 pounds. Then seizing on a young gentleman, the young lady entreated them in the most moving manner not to kill him. But they cut his throat from ear to ear. They then seized the young lady herself and though she entreated them on her knees to spare her life, yet one of the wretches drove a miners pick into her head. Then she dropped down dead at his feet. On the second night, they buried them. But the reckoning came, this really is about karma. So Nicholas C fell from a precipice near the place of the murder and was killed. Thomas H hanged himself. John B was walking near the place where the bones were buried when a stone fell from the hill and killed him on the spot. Francis B went mad and died miserably. James A was most miserably afflicted and tormented in his conscience and on his deathbed in 1778 he confessed the whole of the affair. So that's about the earliest sort of detail. The names Alan and Clara were uh, later on given to them apparently. And I told you about that, that Clara's wealthy parents objected to the match and so they eloped to the Peak Forest Chapel. Anyway, that, that's the story of the murder. So the names were James Ashton, Nicholas Cook, John Bradshaw, Thomas Hall and Francis Butler. And as we said, they all turned out to die in mysterious circumstances and towards the end. The couple were meant to have been buried in St Edmund's Church, but I can't find anything. However, and we're in when it's past now, their spirits are said still to wander when it's past. On a dark night, their voices may be heard begging for their lives. All I've got now in my head, I'll put it up, is this. Alan! 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 <laughs> yeah. Alan! Remember that clip? That went viral. Anyway, so that's the story of Alan and Clara, who allegedly are buried in St Edmund's Church, brutally murdered in this area. I bet they weren't the only ones. Uh, there's quite a notorious highwayman in this area called Black Harry. So I don't know if you've heard of him, but I did a, I did a walk up with, uh, on an area called Black Harry's Gate, I think it was called. So lots of history in this area. Anyway, it's getting quite dark now. I'm going to snuggle up in this in a minute, and I'll come back to you then. Day of the sheep there, mate. <laughs> okay. They were all right at the back of the tent. They've all buggered off now, do. Here we are, all in the tent now. Just going to chill out for a bit, give the missus a ring, take my meds and whatever. But yeah, this is uh, really snug, this uh, this uh, Zen Bivy bed. We'll see how we get on tonight in it. But uh, so far, yeah, all good. And hopefully I won't slide off a bed and everything. Just had a cup of uh, Ovaltine, had the mad sheep outside the tent. They were all really interested in what was going off. <laughs> Bless them. So yeah, we'll chill out for a little while now. Got a lot on at the moment, so my first camp in a little while. Um, got to the wedding to sort, so we're getting married next year. So that should be good, getting married in the village. So uh, in October next year, so so we've been booking stuff and stuff like that and we're keeping it all local local church and 
local place where we're going to have the uh, do afterwards and everything so really looking forward to that what else is going off works mental and crazy uh, i've sent the first draft of my uh, guidebook off to a publisher see if they come back with any interest or not um hoping to get on a few more walks over the next coming weeks a few more camps get into the winter camping so it's going to get a bit more cold weather gear but i think then i should be good with this sleeping uh, kit and just get some down trousers i think maybe down booters and i think i'll be sorted and i've got a rub jacket but it's not too bad tonight it's going to get down to about three degrees i think but at the moment quite warm uh, the t this tent is a four season tent uh, it's not a bad size actually i fit in it quite easily and there's plenty of space over the left hand side here to put stuff uh, the sheep are all loitering around my tent <laughs> i think i'll wake up in the morning surrounded by them they were very curious i've just noticed that the sound's been turned this, this That may have been, I'll start all that again, because that may have been quite loud, but the sound had got a very sensitive sound control on this microphone on the top of the uh, top of the old uh, uh, camera there, this, uh, what's it called? Lark something or other. I'll, I'll put it in Hollyland Lark 2, I think it is. But it's such a sensitive wheel at the top, it doesn't click, so it's very easy to touch it. I've just noticed that's gone to a three. So I'm have to tone down some of the sound tracks. Hopefully that all came out okay. And uh, yeah, just trying to lose a bit of weight now. I was meant to go on a helicopter ride on the, um, about two, two weeks ago, I think it was, 9th of September, I think. And uh, two things, one, they cancelled it because of the weather. And luckily, because I double checked the weight limit and I'm a bit over. <laughs> and they're quite strict. If you're over 95 kilos, mate, you ain't going on. And I was about 96, so a couple of pounds to shed. So back on it now, trying to lose a little bit of weight so I can get on that helicopter ride down the dams on the 20th of October. Hopefully that goes ahead, otherwise it'll be next year. But uh, anyway, we'll see how that goes. So that's a helicopter ride with a, a cream tea afterwards. But yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to update you on. I can't think of anything at the moment. So I'm going to just get better down for the night. I might catch up with you just before I turn the lights out. But if not, I'll catch up with you in the morning. Good morning, that was a cracking sunrise. A wonderful night sleep in the old Zen Bivy. That was absolutely banging mate, I've never been so warm in a tent. But yeah, stunning scenery. So I've had a cup of coffee, we're gonna take the tent down in a sec and then we'll head back and get some breakfast I think. But yeah, the old mam tour packed out behind us. Got the drone squad over there, but yeah. Absolutely banging camp that mate, and only a mile from the door. As always, leave no trace, apart from a bit of flattened grass. That was a fantastic camp, 
looks like a bit of a bit inversion over the other side of that hill. It's a bit of a shame. Not really one in the valley. What excellent sunset. The Zen Bivy um, sleep, sleeping quilt stroke bag. I call it Zen Bivy bag, bed. Zen Bivy bag? Zen Bivy bed. Absolutely bang on, mate. I've never been so toasty. I think it got down to about two or three degrees last night and I was getting too warm. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to using that now. I know it works and it's really comfortable. Comfortable, you can use it as a quilt or a, or a sleeping bag. So, you know, bang on. Anyway, we're gonna head back down now, back home. I think it's about eight o'clock, I would say. Yeah, it's gone up to five to eight. So by the time I get back, the baker will be open. So I'll drop my kit off and go and get me and the missus some breakfast. So yeah, heading off back down now when it's past. If I see anything interesting, I'll catch up with you. The other thing I've been doing is I'm not really wearing my scarpers, but I've been finding them a bit restrictive. So I've got the old Moabs out, the metal Moabs, and uh, my feet don't feel half as tired. And if you're a bit of a boggy mess and that, you might have a few issues. Looks like the mushroom pickers are on over there, mate. This place is a cracking area for magic mushrooms. If you like that sort of thing, and you ever tried it once and dismantled the washing machine, so I won't do that again. Um, yeah, so we're going to head down here. But yeah, the, the Moabs. I'm starting to think I'm going to move to walking shoes most of the time. Just lighter, so you're less fatigued. And they're just as good a grip. They've got a vibrant sole, they're waterproof. I've immersed them in water before, no problem. Um, some people say about your ankle support. I've never had a problem. I'm going to try a few longer hikes with them, I think. We'll see how we get on, but yeah, it's time to get busy now. But that was a stunning sunrise. Really were glad I came out for that now, because I was off and off yesterday, so I felt a bit shit. I'm um, the sheep herder, again. <laughs> this is where the sheep hang out at night. You never see them at night on the road. In the daytime they are, but they all seem to hang out up here. I'll make sure I don't spook them, because sheep are stupid. <laughs> There's a lot on Mam Tour this morning. You can see them all there now. So, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go up there. There were about five, six people when I got, came arrived not long after I got up this morning. I'm going to go through these guys carefully. Good to left, mate. Yeah, have a wee. Brilliant. Come. Got to left. We'll try not to step in that puddle of piss. <laughs> yeah, you all stay sheltered up here by the walls, I think. It gets quite cold in the valley. Oh yeah. It's an iconic shot, that, isn't it? In fact, I'll get a picture of that, I think. I always love this bit here where you go for this little rock. <laughs> That's where we were camped last night up there. That's the edge of the rock near the, near the tent. Superb. Look how the sun's just rising above the rocks there. That's a devil's elbow from the other side. See why it's called an elbow. It's quite a little scramble if you're into your scrambling. Remember I spoke about that mass trespass? Well, there's a plaque commemorating it. I don't know why I've never heard of that. I'm a fucking knob sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. Not far to go now. Very lucky to live here, really, you know, aren't we? Or aren't we, should I say? Still early enough that there's not the mass crowds all clambering up here. That's my missus's favourite tree up there. She sometimes goes for a walk and sits under that. Uh, so, just saw a couple of us saw it at uh, daybreak earlier on. Took a picture of them both. Did that quite a few couples up there this morning. So I took a, helped them, took a few pictures for them. 
So they're just not one of them on their own. And uh, they're saying, you're walking home. I went, yeah, because oh, that's amazing. And it makes you realise how lucky you are sometimes, doesn't it? But anyway, those just fingers look. <laughs> you make your own look. Just coming out of the pass now. A little bit of mist in the valley. No cloud inversion today. I was uh, unsure if we'd get one. This is a mist sometimes, depending on the weather how cold it's been and if there's any wind. So you can see motorhome alley there, absolutely rammed mate. Upwards of 150 motorhomes down there sometimes. Majority of which to be fair are tidy and that, but you do get some absolute tools down there who just set fire to things and empty the toilets out in the farmer's fields and whatever. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, a little bit of mist in the valley there. Already it's getting busy. All the boy racers, there's a few out last night. You could hear them going up and down like a racetrack. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna wander that down here, and back along the bottom of Long Cliff, into Goose Hill and then back home and then get all this crap sorted, get my tent aired out. I've made a mistake a few times of leaving the tent in a bag and I've noticed that the aluminium poles have just got that bit of fur on them, so. I'm going to get everything dried out while it's a nice day out in the garden, garden, courtyard. You no know, such thing as a garden where we are. <laughs> but yeah, that's another route up there. In fact, that'll make a good picture. Look at the light, that's where we were. See where people are there, just to the right of that, on that sort of promontory there. That's where we camped last night. Amazing. That's a path up to the entrance, or the old entrance to Peveril Castle. The only way you can get in now is through the back door <laughs> for half an hour but yeah there used to be a drawbridge across the uh, ravine where the devil's horses but that's since uh, long since gone but yeah you used to head up there and head up into the main castle there and the entrance you go to now is basically where they used to come in through the back entrance but anyway stunning light the sun has well and truly risen in a minute too. He says. <laughs> the old ball and shot. Road's closed down there, so the scaffold and that's the house that got hit by the quarry wagon. So it'll take to the end of January to fix that. The best part of four hundred grand. We've got to basically remove a thousand bricks and rebuild it. The inside as well, these do. Want to do a bit of a wrap up here? Make a change. That's where we live. Um, great walk. Love the crack of sunset. The Zen bivy bed. Highly recommended. Quilt come sleeping bag, mate. Absolutely banging. I've never been so warm. That'll see me through winter easily. I think the comfort rating is minus seven, the limit's minus 12, so absolutely superb. So that's that. That's this week's hike and camp up over when it's past. And then, uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.